Okay, tell me if this is familiar. You've been working in your painting a while, and then you find one of these little crosshairs, for lack of a better term. In this case, it's crosshair with one. If you're anything like me, you have no idea what this does. When I started painting, this would occasionally pop up. I couldn't get rid of it, and it didn't do me any good. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you what it's used for, how to get rid of it, and you might just find yourself using it after all. Okay, so what this is, is the info tool. And it goes along with another window that you might not have opened, and that is the info window. So here we are. You might remember in previous videos, I've talked about the histogram. So let's open that one up as well. The histogram, depending on what mode you're looking at, is essentially just a way to see the breakdown of colors and values in your entire image. Or if you were to make a selection, you could see just the area inside of that selection. Well, that's good, but what if you just wanted one specific area of your painting? Like, let's say I wanted to know, is this down here really black? Okay, so for that, what I would do is I would go to the eyedropper tool, and then I would hold down Shift, and now this changes to the little crosshair, which is the info, and I click. Now you'll notice this says number two, and that's because I already had a number one, and I added a second one, and now I have number two. And then this corresponds here with the info panel. So you'll see here I have number one and number two, and I can see the info in a variety of different formats. Right now it's RGB, and frankly, in my opinion, RGB is never useful for painting. What's much more useful is HSB color. This is hue, saturation, and brightness. And immediately I can tell that it is actually not quite black. Number two here is 2%. Now the neat thing is that this stays put in my image. And no matter what other things I do, number two stays there. And in my info panel, I can see updates. So let's say I were to make an adjustment level here, change curves, and just maybe brighten up the whole image. Well, now we can see that the black point or the little information number two that I attached here went from being 2% to 20%. Alternatively, I could maybe bring this in a bit, and now it is 0%, so it is pure black. In a sense, what I've given myself with this little crosshair is just a data point, a fixed point in the image that's just like using the eyedropper tool, except it stays there even while I do other stuff. So now that we've made them, how do we get rid of them? This is the all-important question. Well, what you do is you go underneath the eyedropper tool here, and you go to the color sampler tool, and then once you're on the color sampler tool, you hold down alt, and you can remove it. In fact, we could have laid them down with the color sampler tool. I just find it a little bit quicker to do it with the one you're maybe using for other reasons, which is the eyedropper tool. So once again, if you're on the eyedropper tool, all you do is hold down shift and it quickly changes into the color picker tool. So you can add down extra points. You can see those appear here in the info panel. And then to remove them, just make sure you're here on the color sampler tool, hold down alt, and you get the little scissors and you can get rid of them. So your only takeaway today might be if you accidentally get one of those annoying little crosshairs like that, you know how to get rid of it, which is by going to the color sampler tool and cutting. But I hope you would start to think about, well, how could these actually be useful for you? One thing to consider might be comparing two areas of color. So maybe you want to know, you know, this area of the shadow compared to this other similar shadow. I've made one on the right and two on the left. Now I can look at them together. Probably I don't want RGB, so we'll go to hue, saturation, brightness on both. And here we can just compare the two. We could see, oh, one is a little bit more saturated than the other, although the two are about the same amount of brightness. As it happens, they're also the exact same hue. So these are just diagnostics to do to your painting. Now how you use them is up to you. But in the next video, I'm going to show you my favorite way to use this when overlaying photos. I think you're going to like it. Have fun painting.